Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Test Studio and today I'm going to share with you how to create that grunge text texture effect in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's check it out. Alright, so in DaVinci Resolve now we're on the edit page and we're going to start by dragging a new Fusion composition in our timeline and move over to the Fusion page. Once in Fusion, the first thing we're going to do is bringing a new neural background link the output of that background to the media out and then reduce the alpha channel down to zero to gain transparency. We're then gonna create our text by bringing here a text node and linking the output of that text node to the background mod so we can see what we're doing. Here in text, I'm gonna write black magic and I'm gonna change the font to road rage and raise the size a little bit. You can download this font on the website of Yusef Apshi, which is a font maker. He's really making great, great work. So I just wanted to give him a shout out for that. You can go directly to his website and download the font from there. It's a free font for personal use, but you can purchase a license for commercial use. I'll put the link in the description below. Then the second thing that I want to create is the rectangle around the text. So I'm going to bring here a new background. I'm going to change the color of that background from black to white and then I'm going to bring a rectangular mask and link the output of the background to the merge tool. Then in the rectangle we're going to untick solid and then here we're going to increase the border width and then we're going to adjust the frame to fit our text. Now to match the font that we use and give a grungy look to the frame we're going to use a displace node and a fast noise to give some texture to that frame. So I'm going to hit shift space on my keyboard and I'm going to search for fast noise and bring that in and hit shift space again and search for displace and bring that in. Then here for the fast noise, I want to make sure that it's not connected through the background, but through the foreground. So here, the green arrow, and then I'm just gonna disconnect here my rectangle, just bring it above the displace and link the output of the background to the displace. And then I can just bring back the output of that displace to my merge to bring it back to my composition. Now if I bring the fast noise to in my viewer, we're going to create some texture. So I'm going to go to the fast noise here in color. I'm just going to increase the alpha channel up to one. Then I'm going to increase the detail up to the maximum, the contrast up to the maximum and the brightness up to the maximum. We're then going to increase the scale. And now I'm just going to bring the displace in the viewer. And as you can see, the fast noise is displacing the rectangle and creating some texture, but it's a bit too much. So we're going to go over to displace here. We're going to switch from radial to X and Y. And now we have a bit more control because we can adjust the X refraction and the Y refraction. So just play around until you get a texture that you like. Usually I don't go too harsh on it. Right now this could be fine, but for example, we could go back to the fast noise and here we could make some more modification on the size. So here I could adjust it more vertically, adjust the angles, so it affect our frame differently. And then if I go back to this place, as you can see, it just changed a bit the way it affected the frame. So now that we've created our text, we're gonna animate it. To do so, we're gonna use a displace node again. So here I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard and search for displace and bring that in. Then we're gonna hold shift on our keyboard and then drag the displace here on the line to connect it to our composition. Then to create our displace animation, we're not gonna use the fast noise, but we're gonna go over to unsplash.com and just download a texture from there that we're gonna then feed into our dissolved node to create our animation. So just pick the one you like the most, try different ones, you will get a different result. In my case, I've used this one. So I'm simply gonna just take it and drag it here in my working area and then link that output to the displace. Now if we're going to displace to the X and Y and we're just seeing the Y refraction, as you can see, it just alter what we've just created and that's what we're gonna use to create our animation. So here I'm gonna go to frame 25 and I'm gonna drop a keyframe on the Y refraction at zero and then I'm gonna go to frame five and bring the Y refraction all the way down. Then we're gonna smooth out that animation by going to the spline editor. Here, I'm gonna just select my displace, select my two point, hit S on my keyboard to smooth out that curve, and then hit T to bring the easing and ease out and increase the easing to the maximum. And now we have the start of our animation. Now we're gonna create a flickering animation. To do that, I'm gonna go over to my displace, hit shift space on my keyboard and search for a brightness node. I'm gonna go activate the alpha channel, I'm gonna go to frame zero and I'm gonna drop the gain down to zero, drop a keyframe, then move two frames forward with my arrow key, one, two, bring the gain up to 0 0.5, then move two frames forward, bring the gain to 0 0.1, 
then again move two frame forward bring it up to 0 0.8 move two frame forward then 0 0.3 and finally two frame forward again and bring it up to one as you can see now in the spline editor we've created that flicker effect by bouncing the opacity value from low to high and it just created that flickering effect now we're going to create a second animation using a transform node. So I'm going to hit shift space on my keyboard, search for transform and bring that in. We're going to keyframe some movement to move the title around and give it a shake effect. So I'm going to go to frame zero, drop a keyframe here on the center, then move two frame forward, move the position slightly, then move two frame forward. Again, move the position slightly and I'm going to repeat that until frame 10. And once at frame 10, we're going to bring it back to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Now, if we play it, I don't really like it because the value is progressively changing position. I want it to jump from a position to another. To do that, we're going to need to adjust our keyframe. And instead of having them linear, we're going to create some steps. So I'm going to select all my keyframe. And then here, I'm going to select step in. And that value is jumping from one keyframe to the next. And it creates a snappier animation in my opinion. Now to finalize, I'm gonna bring in a glow. So I'm gonna hit shift space on my keyboard, search for a glow and bring that in. Right now it's too much and we're losing that texture feeling. So we're gonna reduce it considerably, especially the glow size. So here I'm gonna bring the glow size to two. In this case, what it allowed me to do, it allowed me to just fill in a bit uh, the hole that are in the font created by the brush and it just make it a bit more unified with the rectangle that we've created while keeping some of the texture on the extremities. Now for the last step, I'm gonna bring a background. I'm gonna do something a bit different. It does something that match here, the grunge texture that we just created. So I'm gonna go over to templates and then here search for paper. Then just bring that in. I'm gonna then just unlink here my glow node, bring the paper below it and link the output of the glow to the paper and then link the output of the merge to the media out. Now in the paper, I'm gonna just decrease the gain quite a lot, then decrease the lift and increase the gamma to the maximum and increase the contrast to the maximum. Now I'm gonna just move around the texture seat to just find something that works for me. Here, I'm gonna increase a bit the lift so we can see a bit more the white and move again the texture seat. Just play around until you find a layout that you like. And in my case, I'm pretty happy with that. That will be the final result. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comment what kind of video you'd like to see next. And see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contain over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videodetailstudio.com.